Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, I will be solving some more questions where we have to find the center of rotation. Now these questions are actually past repair questions and uh, there were more parts to it. Like for example, this is a question from May, June 2021, paper 12, okay? But uh, as you can see that I've just erased, uh, let me show you in fact, I've just uh, erased the rest of the parts, okay? So we're just gonna be focusing on the part that involves rotation, okay? So let's see what it says. It says triangle A and B are drawn on the grid. Okay, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. Now, as I said earlier, we also have to write down the transformation, but right now we know that we're doing rotation since that's what this video is on. So that's understood that this here is rotation. And uh, I will make a video where I will teach you how to distinguish between rotation and reflection because those are the two transformations that students tend to uh, confuse between. Okay, so now that we have said it's rotation, let's see what the object is and what the image is. So A is the object and B right here is the image. Okay, so A onto B. So it has to be 90 degrees. Reason for that is the reason why I'm so sure that it's 90 degrees is because if you take this line here, it's horizontal, okay? And after rotation, you can see that it's turned vertical. So like I said, this has to be 90 degrees, okay? And what we can also write with that is the direction. So this has gone, you can say in this direction, okay? So this is what? This is clockwise, yep, yeah. rotation 90 degree clockwise. Okay, now, if you're confused about clockwise and anti-clockwise, the best way to do that is, I mean, the best way to avoid that confusion is to, to just write the hours that you see on a clock, 12, three, six, and nine, and you can know that this is going from nine towards 12, okay? Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to find the center of rotation, which is perhaps the most difficult thing to do of them all. Okay, so for that, let's first pick two points of which we're going to make the perpendicular bisector. So one is this and this, okay, you can call this P and you can call this P prime, okay, distinguishing between the object and the image. If you find out the midpoint of these two coordinates, now sometimes you don't really have to put in so much effort to find the midpoint. You can actually do that by just observing it closely. So for example, if I observe these two points closely and if I join them with the help of a straight line, now remember, whatever you do, make sure to do it uh, using a pencil so that you can erase it. So you can sort of tell that the midpoint is going to be at zero comma one. But again, if you want to do it formally, you can use the formula for midpoint and work it out, okay? so. This is where the midpoint of these two points is going to be. Like I said, you want to work it out formally, you can do that, okay? So using the formula for midpoint. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate either the object or the image 90 degree clockwise or 90 degree anti-clockwise. So let's say this is my center and I want to rotate this point right here, P prime, okay? So this point we can see is one unit up and two units to the right, again. Uh, let's say that I'm rotating this 90 degree clockwise. Okay, so imagine this thing spinning 90 degree clockwise. So that means now it's gonna be one unit to the right and two units down. So there you go. What you now have are basically two points with the help of which you can draw one perpendicular bisector. Okay, so this right here is the first perpendicular bisector. Okay. Now for the other perpendicular bisector, we're gonna try and find an easy way out. Okay, and there's, there, in some cases, there is an easy way out. Now, how do I know that? I know that there's an easy way out because these two points are vertically aligned. So if you have a line that's vertically aligned, the perpendicular bisector is just gonna be a horizontal line. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if you look at these two points, you can see that this point is at two. Okay, Y coordinate is at two, and this point has Y coordinate minus four. Now, if you find out the mid value, so that's gonna be minus one, okay? So these are the two points that I'm talking about right now. The mid value of these two points is gonna be minus one. Now, what you can do now is you can take either one of the two points, okay? Let's take the object this time and rotate it 90 degree clockwise or anti-clockwise. Like I said, it makes no difference. So here we have, this is three units down. So if I rotate this 90 degree, let's say clockwise, so this goes one, two, three, okay? So this goes three units, one, two, three, to the left. And now again, I have two points with the help of which I can make a perpendicular bisector. And there you go, there you have it. What you now have are basically two perpendicular bisectors which are intersecting over here. And this point, fellas, is your center of rotation. So there you go, center is one comma minus one. And there you go, that's how you get three marks. One mark for saying rotation, the other mark for saying the direction and uh, the angle, and the third mark for writing down the center. And this is how you can find the center of rotation without making a mess 
that you would make if you were to use a ruler and a compass. Okay, although that method is completely legit, you can use it, but this is how you don't have to use a ruler and compass. So I hope you've understood this question. Let's do another question and see and further understand how this works. Okay, so here's another question. And here, is, let's see what it says. This, by the way, is from major in 2015. Okay, so you get a little sneak peek on what to expect next. Uh, it's uh, how to distinguish between reflection and rotation. Okay, so let's see what it says. Uh, describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. Okay, so A onto B. So that means A is our object and B is our image. So first things first, let's write down what the transformation is. Okay, so right now you don't have to worry too much about that because that's already taken care of its rotation. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to write down the angle. So this line was vertical, is now horizontal. So that's got to be 90 degrees, that's a no-brainer. A onto B, so that means this is going anti-clockwise, yeah. So there's 12 here, there's nine here, so this has to be 90 degree anti-clockwise. Okay, now comes the difficult part, which shouldn't be that difficult now, I hope. And that's finding the center of rotation, okay. So basically, again, this point is going to rotate and come over here, okay, so let's call this P and P prime, okay? So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna join them with the help of a straight line. By the way, uh, that's kind of unnecessary. You don't really have to join them with the help of a straight line. You can just find the midpoint, okay? So for this, I think I will have to do it formally. So point P has coordinates two comma three, while P prime has coordinates minus one comma two. Okay, so let's find out the coordinates of the midpoint. So two plus minus one is going to be one upon two. 3 plus 2 is going to be 5, so 5 upon 2. So that means half and 5 upon 2, so that's 0 0.5 and 2.5 right here. So let's see what it is that we have to do in order to get to P from the center. So that's half up and one and a half to the right. So if I rotate this 90 degree clockwise, so that means half to the right and one and a half downwards. So this is where we are. So I'm just going to join, a, make a straight line through these two points. And I'm just going to erase the mess that I've made here. Okay, now, the next thing you wanna do is, you wanna do this for some other set of points, okay? So let's do that. So let's take this point right here, and this point has landed over here, okay? There's no denying that. So let's take, let's call this Q, and let's call this Q prime, okay? So Q has coordinates two comma six, you can see that, while Q prime has coordinates minus four comma two, okay? So let's use the formula for midpoint. So you add the x-coordinate, so that's minus two upon two. You add the y-coordinate, so that's eight upon two. So that's minus one comma four. So minus one comma four is gonna be right over here. Now let's take Q and rotate it 90 degree clockwise or anti-clockwise, like I said, it doesn't really make a difference. So in order to get to Q from the center, it's gonna be two units up and one, two, three, three units to the right. So that means now it's gonna be two units to the right and three down. So we land at the point that we marked previously, okay? So now you really don't have to draw a perpendicular bisector because you know that is the point where they're gonna be intersecting, but you know, just to understand, just to get the point across, you can do that. And there you go. Okay, oh, let me line this up correctly. Now we have the two perpendicular bisectors, which means that with the help of this, we can find out what the center is. So the center is one comma one, there you go. Let's just double check. Rotation, 90 degree anti-clockwise, yep, from 12 to nine. And the center is one comma one, there you go. Three marks, oh, two marks, okay. So two marks in the bag. Okay, so I hope you've understood this concept, okay? And uh, make sure to, if you have a hard copy of past papers, okay? Or you can just print them out and practice this on your own using this method and just to see that whether you get the right answer or not. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video in which I will teach you how to distinguish between reflection and rotation. Like I said, since these are the two mo transformations that students tend to confuse uh, the most, okay? So yeah, that's it. See you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.